This is the sixth video in the scripting series, and today we are covering while loops, infinite loops, and the break keyword. By the end of this video, you'll be able to make this part that is randomly changing colors continuously. If you don't know what a loop is, a loop is just a section of code that you want to repeat until a certain condition is met. This is a while loop in Lua, so it starts off with the while keyword, and then you have the condition, the do keyword, and then whatever code you want to loop. Then after that, you put the end keyword to indicate that it is the end of your loop. This condition right here is a Boolean. So it's either a true or a false. And in this case, X less than 100 is a Boolean because it always results in a true or false. So this operation right here results in a true or false. A loop works by just checking this condition right here. If it's true, then the loop will execute. So I'll go through this line, execute it, next, next. Once it gets to the end of the loop, just before the end keyword, it'll go back up to this right here and test to see if the condition is still true. If this condition is still true, then the loop will execute again. So it'll print X again, add one to X again, wait a second, and then repeat. If it's true, it'll repeat again. If this condition right here is not true, then the loop will stop, it'll terminate, and then it'll execute any code after the loop. So if there was code down here, then that would execute after this loop is terminated. While this loop is continuing, it's looping, any code below it will not execute. So it's important to note, especially for infinite loops. If you have an infinite loop and any code after, it will never execute. Now let me explain how this loop works. We're setting a variable equal to zero, and then we have this condition x is less than 100. This will be used to allow us to execute the loop 100 times because we're gonna add one to X every single time we loop. This loop will print zero all the way up to 99. So one, zero, one, two, three, all the way up to 99. And it'll stop at 99 because after this is set to 99, X equals 99. It'll go up here, 99 is less than 100. It'll print 99 and then we'll add one to 99. So it'll be 100. It'll wait one second here, go back up, Every 100 is less than 100. That is not true. So then we'll go to the end of the loop and then there's no more code to execute. Now let me teach you how to use an infinite loop to continuously and randomly change this brick's color. So all I did was insert a part and then now I'm gonna insert a script into the part and get a reference to the part. So I'll type local brick equals script dot parent and then we need to create a loop. And for an infinite loop, we need to type wall true do and then the end. So because the condition is always true, this loop will continuously execute. So here we're gonna set the brick, uh, brick color to a random brick color. And we'll do that by doing brick color dot random. This line right here will continuously execute. However, if we run the game right now, our game will actually crash. And that's because this loop will continuously try to execute. This line right here, every second, many, many times a second, thousands upon thousands of times per second, this will try to execute. So in order to prevent that problem, we need to actually add a wait statement. So we'll type wait 0.5. And what this will do, will wait half a second before repeating the loop. If you have an infinite loop, it is critical to have a wait statement. Often I see people just doing wait with no time right there. And that actually defaults to 0.03 approximately. And that's not always a good practice necessarily. There are times where you may actually want to use wait with the default time. However, I wouldn't always recommend it. I think a lot of times people use this because they're trying to wait for some condition to become true. For example, they're trying to wait for multiple players in a game. Maybe they want to wait till there's two players in a game to start it. And oftentimes there's better ways to go about doing that. For example, if you're waiting for maybe a couple of players in the game, you can wait for the player added event. And I haven't talked about events yet. Um, that'll be later on in this series, but just know that if you're doing a wait with a very small time, such as the default 0.03, uh, try to see if there's a better way to go about doing that loop. Maybe there isn't, maybe there is. But now let's go back to the 0.5. So this will execute every half second. Now if we run the game, you'll see that the part is changing colors every half second. Now let's talk about the break keyword. The break keyword can be used to break out of a loop. So if we put the break keyword right here, then this loop would actually only execute once. The brick color would be changed, we'd wait half a second, then it would break and execute any code below. We could also use the break keyword like this, so we could say if 
the brick that brick color is equal to um, the brick color dot new and then toothpaste. So this would actually basically search for the toothpaste color. And then if the brick is randomly assigned to toothpaste, then the loop would break. So if we run it, you'll see that the brick is randomly changing colors and it will only stop once we get to that toothpaste color. As you can see, we finally got to the toothpaste color and the brick stopped changing colors. Maybe you realized it, maybe you didn't, but we could also actually just remove this and we could put it right here and get the same effect. So if we just do like that, that'd be the same thing as having that break statement before. So there is some debate on the internet among programmers if you should use break statements or not, because for the most part, you could get the same effect by just maybe adding another condition. So if, even if we did have some condition before, other than just this, we could add the condition right here as well of having the toothpaste color. Personally, I think if you think that the break statement is clean in your code and you wanna do an infinite loop like this and use the break statement here, go for it. It's just really up to you and what you can read easily and understand and go back to and understand. That's a big part about programming is just being able to understand your own code and feeling comfortable with it. That wraps up this video. Subscribe for more in the future. Like the video if it helped you out and comment any questions down below.